We are waiting for Jeremy Groombridge. And Jeremy has had the noble task of chairing the ESCO management board for many years and steering the whole process to where we are today. He has been a senior civil servant in the United Kingdom for most of his career, which as far as I'm concerned means that I've been paying his salary because I'm from the UK and I'm a taxpayer. Um, but he's, been, he's held many different posts within uh, the UK civil service and for 10 years has been the di director of Job Centre Plus, which is the United Kingdom's public employment service. So every time I've been unemployed, he's been the person helping me find a job, which is good news. So that's probably money well spent, I would say, on his salary. Where are we with Jeremy? Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause. So we might just need to give Jeremy a minute to get his breath back. <laughs> Jeremy, the podium is yours. Um, I've introduced you. We've had the opening speeches, the maintenance committee has been pointed out, the board has been pointed out, all the reference groups have been pointed out, the secretariat has been pointed out. So we're all ready to roll. What do you need in order to get going? I need just a bit of attention. Very good. <laughs> good. Well, um, first let me apologise for my somewhat rushed um, arrival today. Um, Everything has been running extremely tight time-wise, but uh, it's good to be here um, despite late planes and late trains and all the rest of it. For me, it's a tremendous honour to um, be able to talk to you today at this really important uh, event, uh, representing, as it does, the official launch of the first working version of ESCO. ESCO, as I'm sure you will have seen from your uh, documentation, is the new multilingual classification of European skills, competencies, uh, qualifications and occupations. And since 2010, when the board was uh, formed, it's been my privilege to chair the board I have to say that my starting point um, as a policymaker in the Department uh, of Work and Pensions in the UK, um, and then later as uh, the founding director of Job Centre Plus, which is the United Kingdom Public Employment Service, my starting point has always been to bring about uh, fluidity, uh, activity and confidence in the labour market and to facilitate active job search. That's why ESCO really fits with what I've been wanting to do for many, many years. Before I go into the detail of that, I just want to say a few thank yous right at the start of this event. I want to pay tribute to the contribution that my fellow board members have made this has been um, a long and sometimes hard journey for us to take. Um, but I would like to pay tribute to not only the contribution they've made, but the expertise that they've brought. I'd also like to thank the members of the Maintenance Committee um, for the expertise that they too have brought and uh, the advice that they've given on methodology and methods of monitoring and so on. I'd like also to thank the reference groups, the labour market experts, the people who've got the detailed knowledge of skills and qualifications and industry standards and requirements and so on. And a very special mention I want to make of the cross-sector reference, uh, cross reference group um, for the way that they've applied their knowledge of cross-sector skills and competencies. And I also want to pay tribute to the project team and to the Secretariat, without whom none of this uh, would have been possible. 
Um, so a huge amount of effort has gone into making this a reality. But of course, ESCO involves a very diverse range of stakeholders, public stakeholders, private stakeholders, third sector organisations, employment services, social partners, education, training authorities, just to mention a few, HR specialists, recruitment specialists, uh, IT providers, the OECD, uh, the ILO, all sorts of important stakeholders have a role to play in making this a success. Now, I believe passionately in supporting the efforts of job seekers to find work. Really, that's been my life's work. That's why I'm so encouraged to see so much progress. But to make things like active job search happen, you have to have a counterpart elsewhere in the system. Because the world of labour market conditionality and active job search cannot exist in isolation from the world of training and the world of skills, development and education. And if we're going to have a labour market in Europe functioning efficiently, then we have increasingly to focus on knowledge and skills and competencies and to marry those up with education and training systems. Now that's always been the case, but never more so is it the case now as the need to provide workers with better training, with better job matching services has been heightened in the aftermath of the financial crisis. It's wiped out jobs right across the European Union. A crisis that's pushed huge numbers of people uh, out of work. People who need, in order to get back into work, more responsive training and job matching services to help them find the new jobs that are now beginning to emerge. And ESCO is designed to support public and private employment services and employers themselves in their response to those kinds of challenges. And if we're going to make the best out of the pools of talent and skill resources that are available, and in order to ensure that there is a reliable supply of skilled labourers, employers and HR managers, they all need to be able to articulate their requirements in, a, in, in terms that uh, are commonly and consistently defined in order to enable them to draw up their job descriptions and in order to secure the best fit for the requirements. That simply is how a market works. And it's essential to build confidence at all levels of that market in order to avoid the very market failure that unemployment represents. And ESCO provides an opportunity for employment services to exchange meaningful information across the union, to provide real, what we call, interoperability in order to support the matching of CVs and vacancies across Europe, and encouraging occupational and regional mobility. But equally important, I think, will be the ability in future to be able to provide a terminological tool to education and training providers, and it will, I think, be of particular value in the definition and description of learning outcomes that are required in qualification standards and criteria. So we see a shift more and more to that reflected in the developments of frameworks such as the European Qualifications Framework, the rewriting of standards and curricula and the introduction of new assessment and validation approaches. And more and more, the focus has to be on what a person knows and understands and is capable of actually doing, having undergone a learning process. I think that's what we mean when we speak in terms of facilitating a dialogue, a dialogue between the labour market, education and training, so that as they build their qualification and their knowledge and their skills profiles, 
those who are undertaking learning work towards clearly and consistently defined learning outcomes. And ESCO is designed to support that. So I think that um, the case for uh, the common multilingual classification that ESCO is, is pretty compelling. It isn't a job matching system in itself. It isn't a system necessarily on its own for identifying skill shortages or recognising qualifications, but it's a tool to improve the impact of other tools that perform those functions directly. And it's a tool that has huge potential to support mobility, to help identify areas of skill shortage and opportunities for learning and training. It's certainly something that has been long recognised in the European Union. The need to develop that common language between education and training and the world of the labour market features certainly in the 2009 uh, New Skills for New Jobs initiative and affirmed by Europe 2020. And in developing this new classification, the team have built on what is already there. So, for example, the classification system that is currently used in EURES, the European Job Mobility Portal. And what you're seeing today, the version of ESCO that we're launching today, groups occupations in a multi-level structure uh, based on ISCO, which is the international standard classification of occupations. It doesn't replace ISCO, it is distinct from ISCO, and in a sense it extends it by providing more detailed information about occupations and it enables to the identification of shortages to be shown by skills and competence and not just by broad uh, occupational groups. And what you'll see during the course of this event is that ESCO provides a level of detail that enables a number of things to happen, including uh, improved and qualitative uh, job matching. It goes beyond the groups of occupations and it provides a detailed classification of skills and competencies, qualifications and occupations. In due course of time, uh, shortly in fact after this event, it will cover 25 uh, different languages. Uh, compared to the three, I think, that are used in ISCO. And whereas ISCO provides uh, classifications for statistical purposes, this is actually only one of the functions that ESCO provides. It adopts one structured reference vocabulary for comparing, collecting and structuring data in the European uh, Union skills panorama. And it facilitates benchmarking and uh, cross-country comparisons. What we've seen over recent years is the advance of technology, technology like natural uh, language processing that makes automatic job matching possible. And ESCO enables job seekers to prepare, prepare their CVs so that to describe their skills and competences and qualifications in a manner that facilitates comparison against job vacancies already being advertised. So it is my belief that ESCO will improve skills-based job matching online. And because it provides a structured classification that you can use to organise information and incorporates terms that are frequently used in the labour market, it will help even uh, interpret um, unstructured data, semi-structured data that job seekers and employers often use in describing their requirements. Now, some formats, of course, are already in existence and they're already fairly standardised. So the Europass CV is a good example of uh, an opportunity to position data in order to give information that helps interpret the data correctly. But the point is that ESCO offers potential to improve the results of job search, job mapping and defining requirements. The other thing, of course, about ESCO is that it's structured on three pillars. So it connects occupations, skills and competencies and qualifications. So, for example, work experience and qualifications. 
are translated into skills and competencies. And that will dramatically improve the experience for a job seeker. And it will also be of immense value for those who need to use this information to draw conclusions about where skills and competencies need to be identified or improved. That will bring about more transparent matching of job seekers to vacancies and employers to potential recruits. And you can begin, therefore, to see why, certainly from a public employment service perspective, um, I've been so keen and enthusiastic uh, to support the system. As well, because it's being introduced and built and developed in an open IT format, it's capable of being downloaded and incorporated into third-party software. It will be free of charge. And through this system that is rather indelicately called semantic interoperability, which is a bit of a mouthful, but you'll hear it as a term used quite often during the next couple of days, it will be capable of being integrated with applications that provide services like job matching, career guidance and self-assessment. What you will see today in ESCO version 0 is the first fruits of a major, major project. It's the first release of ESCO for public access. It's vitally important that it, you recognise this is a long-term project with subsequent releases that will bring about increased levels of granularity as we build up the classification system with Europe-wide relevance. You'll find that this version contains the data model for qualifications that will be directly included and a sample list of those, but there's more work to be done in that area. National qualifications aren't yet incorporated. There will be more work done to define the relationship between the pillars and to differentiate between skills, competences and knowledge, for example, in the skills pillar and to develop and expand that sample list of qualifications that's currently contained in the qualifications pillar. And to take on board the work that's being done under the European Qualifications Framework, and in particular through the development of national qualifications frameworks and interconnecting national databases with the EQF portal. As we develop those subsequent releases, we will reap the benefits of the meticulous work that has been carried out, particularly by the reference groups. More fields of economic activity will be covered over time. Gradually, the system will be built up. Now, I know you, and probably me as well, to be honest, would like to see an acceleration of all of this work. But I have begun to see over the past few years just how painstaking and detailed this is. And also recognise that we're relying on the willingness of members of the reference groups to undertake this work beyond their day job. You will get a taster today for what is to come. I won't disguise my hope that over time, ESCO might become the de facto standard through mapping of national, regional, sectoral classification systems. It can act as a hub to allow one mapping to exchange information with all other classification systems. And gradually you help to simplify and reduce the cost of updating those mapping systems. There's a lot more to be said, a huge amount more that will be said over the coming couple of days. Um, but I hope that you find this event helpful, useful, and I hope you learn a lot about the value of ESCO. Because that is what we are about, I think, to launch. There is, I think, a countdown. I'm not quite sure how that's going to work. We've got one minute and 34 seconds to go. So, I don't know how we do this, but I guess we get to the point where we count down the last 10 seconds, don't we? Indeed. First of all, though, a big hand for Jeremy, who literally was running across the Grand Place to get here. It's now my great pleasure to invite um, another man who shares the same name as me, Martin. Martin Levrang, up on stage. <laughs> Martin is the...
project manager of ESCO, is a team leader at the European Commission, and you'll need to tell us what that means a bit later on, uh, in the Directorate General for Employment, Social Affairs and Inclusion. Martin, we're getting ready for the countdown. Can you see this, ladies and gentlemen, on your screens? Yeah. Here we go. We'll all find out if you're in good voice later on as we get to the final 10 seconds. You'll have to count with us. Martin, over to you. Being the, being the team leader first and foremost means that if at the end of the countdown nothing happens, I will be the first one being made responsible for it. <laughs> so I, I believe, Jeremy, we can start counting yeah, down well together with the audience. 15, well, 14, 13, 13, 12, no, 12 stop. 11, <laughs> Here we go. 10. Nine, eight, eight seven, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So we were almost on time with the countdown, a few more seconds, uh, but I think that should be fine. So you have already heard uh, this morning a bit about what is the intention of ESCO, what do we want to do with ESCO, why will ESCO help to create a common language on the labor market, and what I would like to do now in the next 15-20 uh, minutes is to bring it a bit more to the practical level and to explain you what does it really mean we went live with ESCO. So we see, we see the ESCO portal now, but what is it? What will be on there? What will be the contents of ESCO? Uh, what does it really mean in practice? Um, for us it's a very special moment, uh, not only for the board, also for the ESCO Secretariat and the ESCO Maintenance Committee, because we have been working for the last three years um, within our own circles with some stakeholders but we have never been exposed to the public at large so we created a lot of papers, we gave a lot of presentations, we created the methodology uh, we worked on the content, we created databases but the, the final tangible output was not yet shown to the public and this is the first time that everyone in Europe can see what, uh, what ESCO is. So what is it about? I will start with this rather historical chart um, which uh, Henrik found in our archives of 1972. This is a chart from the, well basically the service that existed before EURES, the CEDOC service to exchange job vacancies one by one using Telex. Mm. Um, and for this service they came up with this coherence de term. So it was put on paper like this with six languages at that time because we had only six member states um, and it, it shows which terms or which occupations are the same in the, in the different languages. And basically this is what ESCO is about. We try to do it with a bit more modern means, it, uh, it evolved a bit since 1972 but this is the basic idea. We show the, uh, the correspondence of terms in, well now it's 22 instead of six languages and now we have an automated exchange of job vacancies, so times have changed, but uh, the basic idea is this. So what will the ESCO portal allow the user to do? The main purpose of the ESCO portal is that everyone uh, can access this correspondence of terms, can consult all the classification, all the vocabulary of ESCO, it is more than a correspondence of terms, it also shows relationship between different concepts, it shows which skills competences are uh, important for which occupation. But the basic idea of the ESCO portal is that it al allows users to access ESCO, no matter if they use it for uh, their own research, so if they uh, need maybe rather high level information, or if they are software developers and they need the whole stuff because they want to implement it in their own portal. What I would also like to highlight uh, when looking at the portal is what the portal is not. I think it's also important uh, to keep in mind. The ESCO portal is not providing job matching. It's providing access to the ESCO classification which can be used in applications that do job matching. 
It is not providing career guidance. It provides access to the classification that can be used in career guidance tools. So uh, it's also not providing statistical information. All these practical applications that we are talking about will need to access ESCO to be implemented and for that we have put in place the portal. As you see uh, right from, from the starting page of the portal, we have three different uh, types of concepts. These are the three with the, with the photos in the middle, occupations, skills, competences, and qualifications. That's also what makes the name of ESCO, stands for European Skills, Competences, Qualifications, and Occupations. So if we look a bit more in detail, what exactly is in there? What, what do we have in ESCO? With the current version that we are publishing, ESCO covers 4,761 occupations that are grouped, Jeremy already mentioned it, uh, in a hierarchical structure under the ISCO 08 taxonomy, the International Standard Classification of Occupations. Each of these concepts exists, for each of, for each of these occupations we have terms in all the 22 languages. And for each of these occupations, we also show what are the skills competences that are relevant for the occupation. And we start to show what are the qualifications that are relevant for the occupation. Then if we look at the second part, the skills and competences, we have 5096 skills and competence concepts that have their own hierarchical structure. Um, and here, skills and competences can be understood in a very broad sense. So basically, it is what the labor market is looking for. It can also include tools, it can include knowledge. It's basically what an employer uh, uses to describe what they, are, what they want from, from an employee. A uh, very important um, aspect of ESCO version 0 is that we include transversal skills and competences. So these are skills and competences that can be applied in a large variety of jobs across different sectors that are important in different occupations. Uh, examples for that are uh, communication skills, language skills, teamwork. These kind of skills, they are already included with the uh, outputs, with the results from the cross-sector reference group. The other parts of the uh, ESCO classification are not yet based on the ongoing work of the reference group. We are going to hear more about that uh, on day two of the conference. So basically it is an improvement of the EURES classification with some, uh, well, I would say with some very substantial improvements that we made compared to, uh, to, to the first version of the EURES classification, but it does not yet show the, on, the results of the ongoing discussions in the reference group. Then, finally, we already included some qualifications. Work on the qualifications part of ESCO is at an early stage. But we are developing the methodology, we already have uh, uh, developed the methodology and the concept for including qualifications in ESCO. So we included some examples of how qualifications will look in ESCO in future. We have two different strands for our work on qualifications. On the one hand we want to cover national qualifications that are being described uh, within the work that is uh, carried out uh, in, the, in the European Qualifications Framework. So we want to be fully aligned with the European Qualifications Framework. On the other hand, we want to cover some specific qualifications that are important for the labor market. For example, international certificates uh, that are, let's say, uh, issued by multinational corporations like Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer. Uh, other international certificates that are harmonized or for which we have a, a legal framework. We want to include them as well if they are not covered by the work in the European Qualifications Framework. So if we look at the portal, the basic idea of the portal is to make all the information accessible, background information about the project, to give access to the contents of ESCO in different ways so that it suits the needs of each different uh, type of stakeholder, but also to allow uh, stakeholders to get in contact with us and to make their own proposals. So one section that you will find on the portal is called About ESCO. It includes some frequent questions that, uh, that people that, that come in contact with ESCO for the first time will have about the project. It also includes background material for download. And this section will be uh, extended over the next coming weeks. Then the second way of accessing ESCO 
is by using the search function. So there is always a search box on the website and if a user wants to search for one specific occupation, one specific skill, you just start typing. So here we, we have the example of a search for florist and you see as a result in the classification you find an occupation which is florist, you find skills and competences like for example teaching, handicraft uh, or, or florist uh, and you will also find in this case a qualification, the European Certificate of Floral Design. So that's the easiest way of finding one specific concept. If you want to explore the different categories within ESCO, uh, you can browse the, the various hierarchies. So you can either start browsing the occupations, the skills competences or the qualifications. In the case of occupations, which is shown here on the screen as an example, um, you start from the ISCO classification and you can use a structure like the Windows Explorer basically to go down to the lowest level, which would then be the uh, ESCO occupations. So in this case, uh, we are in, in the ISCO level 4 group of accountants and we could open an ESCO occupation and then you see the information here, it's accounting controller, about this concept in ESCO. So you will see the vocabulary, you will see what is the name of this concept and what are skills competences that are related to this occupation. There is also an expert view in which you see some alternatives names for the same occupation. So for each element in ESCO we have one name but we might have other names as well that are used on the labor market and uh, we also put them in. And you will also see the terms in all the other languages. So for each of the concepts we have the terms in 22 languages which means in total the classification and the portal cover more than 200,000 terms. In the skills we have a structure which starts from the distinction between job specific skills which are very relevant for one occupation or for one sector which are hard skills. Here we give some examples like biomedical analysis, CNC programming, fashion hairstyling. These are very specific things. You cannot use that in very different uh, uh, occupation. While the transversal skills like negotiate, generate new ideas, work as part of a team, these are things you can also use in another uh, sector. So for these transversal skills we have uh, also a hierarchical structure and I mentioned that earlier this is already based on the work that has been done in the cross-sector reference group. For the qualifications by now it's a small sample set but it's, we, we wanted to illustrate how qualifications will look in ESCO. So uh, for now you can browse through these qualifications to get a grasp of how will qualifications be uh, displayed. And then we come to a very important section and that is the downloading section. So you can search to find one concept, you can browse to go through the hierarchy, but for many users they basically need the whole data set. And there we offer different options, different file formats uh, and different uh, parts of the classification that you can download. Uh, on the one hand we have comma separated values and XML files for the specific parts of ESCO. So you could, for example, download all the occupation lists, all the skills competences lists in a specific language that you're looking for as comma separated values so that you can use it in Excel. This is interesting for people that do research or uh, maybe also for, uh, for creating statistics. While a software developer that wants to use ESCO to, to enhance their own tools or to, to use the vocabulary in all the languages for their own tools will normally need the whole data set. So what we also offer is to download the whole data set of ESCO in all the languages with all the relationships, with all the concepts uh, in RDF format, which is an open uh, file format that will allow developers to easily implement what they need, the parts that they need into their own applications. Um, and this is free of charge and can be used by everyone. Finally, there is a small uh, category on the bottom of the page which is called Get Involved, um, which allows you to get in contact with the ESCO Secretariat, first of all. Uh, so in case that you have very specific questions about ESCO, how to use ESCO, you want to implement it, but you need more 
detailed information, you can contact the ESCO Secretariat. But it also allows everyone to send a suggestion. So if people uh, consulting ESCO see there is a mistake or there is an occupation missing or I believe this occupation is no longer relevant, they can send us this information and it will feed into the work of the reference groups and of the ESCO management bodies so that for future releases of ESCO we can base ourselves also on the input that we get from, uh, from the market. So that was a very quick tour through the ESCO portal and I believe the, the best way uh, to see the contents of the ESCO portal is if you explore it yourself. Here you will see the URL https europaeu slash ESCO. Make sure that you have the HTTPS, otherwise if you type HTTP you will come to a website that provides you with a link to the portal. So, thank you very much for your attention and I hope you will uh, find the time in the coffee breaks and in the lunch break to explore the portal in detail. Ladies and gentlemen, Martin Levine.